why the youngsters are doing things which are not normal. So, for instance, girls don't normally hang themselves. They prefer drugs or slashing their wrists. But now you're seeing people committing suicides in ways which are not the normal ways. And what it is heading towards is that these youngsters and young people are very disturbed and something's disturbing them. And it's not microwave towers. It's something that's being done to them in school, in colleges and elsewhere. Why? Now we've got something else going on and that is that there is a massive third sector. If some of you have heard talks that I've done on Common Purpose, you'll have heard me talking about the third sector. The third sector is all the quangos, charities. Do we have charities anymore? You see people going around with a little bucket collecting for something, an SPCC, whatever it is. But actually, charities are an industry. And in this country, they're worth £44 billion. Pounds. And this government and advisors to this government and the Conservative government... Did you see what I did with my hand there? It's creepy, isn't it? That was an accident. Basically, the third sector is being used as the new controlling sector of society. As you take power away from Parliament, that's why they're talking about getting rid of MPs. As you take power away from Parliament, it's going to go to the third sector where chosen leaders, think common purpose, are going to run things. And that's why Mr Cameron is smugly saying, I'm going to help poor people. I'm going to take the weight of government off them. What that means is, I'm going to remove MPs from Parliament. I'm going to help people by putting more money into charities and the third sector. He's not going to help them at all. That money will be used to impose the control structure for the new government. And your children are to be re-educated and re-engineered into a new society. Now, Bernardo's is a classic here because the chief executive stood up recently and said, Brilliant, we must adopt more children at birth. Some children are being adopted before they're born. They're nominated for adoption before they're born. The children are taken, the baby's taken away from the mother immediately she's given birth. That's happened on numerous occasions. And this man, chief executive of charity, says we need more babies taken at birth. What he doesn't say is he effectively provides consultancy. So the more babies that come into the world that he can get his hands on, the more money Bernardo's makes. So the next time the little pot comes around with Bernardo's, just think a bit deeper about what that organisation's doing. And the bottom statement is John Hemmings, who got a bit hot under the collar and said, this man doesn't really know what he's talking about. But I tell you, he does know what he's talking about because he's into the money for children business or children for money. And this is all going on under our noses. The BBC's involved. And they've done at least one major programme where they're after parents. And I challenged them and they got pretty heavy in a meeting in Plymouth. And when I asked do you know the children are willingly given up for adoption? They were advertised. I'll come over here. This is a magazine where they're showing photos of children and advertising them. Just like puppies. But the BBC got a bit stroppy. So we started digging. Now, Common Purpose is there. I'm not going to go too heavy on Common Purpose because it's a whole subject. But this is the doorway to their London headquarters. It doesn't say anything. And that's because they're doing a lot behind the scenes, particularly behavioural modification. And they are going into schools in a very big way. And they're going into social services. Can I prove what I'm saying? Everything. So that's a little snapshot of Wales for you. Interesting, isn't it? Common purpose is amongst the social services, and we've got problems with people. 
And this one is my favourite because about three years ago I started to warn about paedophiles involved with Common Purpose because Common Purpose runs secret networks. And here we've got James Rennie, recently sentenced. He was abusing children as young as three months in Scotland. He was a Common Purpose trained person. He was selected for that training by a Common Purpose advisory board. On that board was a senior police officer who later formed the same police force that arrested him for paedophilia. 30th of October, Common Purpose was still proudly boasting his Facebook on one of their internal websites. And this organization goes into school to train your children. We are using neuro-linguistics on the police and the police are involved with children. Let's talk some cases. This is a lady up in Liverpool. She had three children. She was in the park one day. And a small motorbike came up onto the grass and hit one of her boys, broke his arm, damaged his leg, and he was duly taken to hospital, where, as a responsible mum, she stayed by his bedside for three days, while the other two children went to her mother. At the end of the third day, uh, she'd been away, gone to the loo or something, came back, and there's a big group of people around the bed, about eight of them, doctors and people in plain clothes. And they said to her, uh, Mrs. Spallack, we're, we're going to take your, your son. We're going to take your children. She said, what are you talking about? Well, we've got reason to say that these children need to be taken into care. That was all that was said to her. And then and there, they took the boy in bed, and while that was happening, the police went to her mother's house because her mother was looking after the other two children and they took the other two children. And she has never had access to those children since. Never. We've printed her story which caused ructions and a judge was moved because every piece of information used against this woman is fabricated, a pack of lies from start to finish. Sounds unbelievable, doesn't it? There must be something wrong with her. There isn't. She doesn't drink, she doesn't take drugs, she doesn't have multiple partners. She is a normal lady, separated from a previous husband. They've taken the three children. And every shred of evidence used against her is fraudulent. This is another case. I've been intimately involved with this one. I've given a talk on it before I got an injunction slapped on me. This lady had a daughter. The daughter was ill. And I'll tell you what was the matter with her, as they later found out. She had a thing called Zollinger's disease, which is multiple perforations of the gut, like multiple ulcers. Intensely painful, so painful that the pain eventually radiates right, right through to your back. She went into a series of South Wales hospitals where she wasn't treated. We've got the documents where we show that there was no diagnosis, but they prescribed a huge cocktail of drugs. They tried to get the mother at one stage to give her a dose of oral morphine. If the mother had given it to her, she would have killed the daughter. She was run around hospitals, the daughter was in pain, she couldn't work at school properly, social services got involved, nightmare. Because the next minute is that in taking the girl to America to get a medical opinion, social services went to America with no legal, lawful documentation and took the girl away at gunpoint because they got the American police involved. And I have sat in a court with this lady uh, twice or three times now, and in the last case, because she now acts for herself, she proved in that court that when the girl was taken away, the local authority had no legal power to do so whatsoever. The judge was happy to allow the local authority to have witnesses, but he wouldn't allow the mother to have witnesses, even though they were local councillors prepared to testify on oath that their council had broken the law. 
Welcome to Secret Courts. This is a small selection of the drugs this poor girl was uh, prescribed, and that is a statement by a judge, allegedly, trying to clear his yard arm, as they say in the Navy, by saying that when they went to America, there wasn't really any breach of order, i.e. it wasn't his fault. Nevertheless, that girl has never been returned to her mother, and she's now over 18, and she has been turned. Your mother doesn't love you, why would she leave you in this home? This is a little note this girl wrote. She wrote a series of them. And I tell you, I still find it difficult. Just read what she says. She was never allowed in a court to say she wanted to go home. When they brought her back from America, they put this girl in the psychiatric institute. They told her, you are imagining your pain. What about that for mental cruelty? And eventually, though, social services ended up putting her on a cocktail of drugs till they realized that what the mother had discovered in America, Zollinger's, was true. There wasn't any apology, and the girl was never given back. And she wrote about 20 pleading letters like this. And she tells about social services people laughing at her. A Plymouth couple, I've got an injunction, can't talk about them. Their baby was ill, Derriford Hospital. The hospital said it was a cancer, a form of cancer. They wanted to do chemo, all sorts of things. The parents just didn't believe it. And they said, no, we don't want the treatment. Bang, in came social services. Baby taken away, subsequently proved the hospital diagnosis was wrong and the parents were right. Never had the baby back and the mother has subsequently had two further babies and they are taken away as well. On the last occasion, social services went into the delivery room to tell the mother, having she'd just given birth, that that baby was also going to be taken away. And one of the two social workers that went into the delivery room had um, shingles. Because they're Christians, there are in the notes intimations that they're mentally ill. If you're a Christian, you've got to be mentally ill. This is a fantastic lady. I speak to her a lot, a 10-year-old son taken. If I had more time, I could show you more. Within a few weeks of disappearing into a care home, he's thin, weak, and he's so frightened he's wetting himself. But she said, the scary thing is, Brian, they're hunting me for my three-year-old. Hunting. And this is the word that the parents use. And what fascinated me is people who gave me information, different parts of the country, it was a template operating. They'd never colluded or talked to each other, but their stories as to how the social services took their children tied in. This is a French lady, married originally to an Englishman living in this country. She discovers the two girls are being abused. She goes to social services and the police for help. The case is twisted 180 degrees, because this is the technique. And eventually, it destroys her health. So they've now got her pinned as a sort of psychiatric case. Tough lady, Corinne. She fought and fought. And eventually, much to her amazement, was awarded custody of the girls and permission to go to France. She took them to France. And within a few months, the father had fought through the French courts and they re-awarded him custody, even though he was the man abusing the children. I've got some photographs, which I'd love to show you, but I don't think you want to see them. Collusion between judges, England, France. Collusion between French social services and English social services. Interesting. Interesting. 